Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at pivot tables as they are used or created in Microsoft Excel. So let's see what we can learn here. So I'm inside my pivot table, or excuse me, Microsoft Excel. And you know, we have some interesting data right here. We have information about the name of, name of a student, the class that they're taking, semester, how many credits, you know, the price per credit, and then the total sales for that particular student or whatever. And of course, we have the same student multiple times. So we have Tom about four times, James about two times, Sally about two times, Tom about two times, etc. You get the idea. And so the benefit of a pivot table inside Microsoft Excel is that it allows you to summarize information so that you can come up with some insights quickly. And so that's what we're going to take a look at here. So what we need to do is you want to highlight all of the all of your information like so. And then you're going to start on the home tab, obviously, when you log in and then you're going to click on the insert tab and click on pivot table. Now this first little box right here, you normally don't want to change this unless you know you have some uh, some advanced information here, but it's telling you what is going to what data is going to be included inside the pivot table. Uh, and then down here for this uh, next box, you can click on existing worksheet. This second box is if is if you want to use external data, which we're not going to deal with that. That's like connecting to some other data that you might have on your computer. So down here it says, do you want to put this information in a new data sheet or an existing data sheet, worksheet, excuse me. And we're going to click existing worksheet so we can, um, you know, compare what we're doing here. So when I click on the arrow, I'm just going to put all my information right here in I2. That's where it's going to start at. Click back down on the drop down arrow and then I click OK. And so now everything is set up so that I can actually begin making my pivot table. Now you have to understand that here in the top right here, these are my different, you know, columns, if you will, are my different variables that I can put inside my pivot table. And so, you know, you have to understand the difference between categorical data and continuous data. Otherwise it's very easy to get confused up here and it, and it will be hard to interpret the results. So the first example I'm going to make for you is, I'm going to take students, so that's the name of the students. And I'm going to drag this down to rows. And so you can see here, this is obviously categorical data, and I have my rows here, Dan, James, Sally, Sarah, Tom. Now, I don't have any duplicates. So even though Dan is in the, the original table four times, he only appears here once because the pivot table is summarizing data. Now, the next thing we're going to drag down here is going to be credits, as an example. So we're going to take credits and we're going to put this in the values. So credits is continuous. And so what you can see right here is that what the pivot table is doing is that it is summing how many credits these students have taken, you know, based on the data in this table. So again, can you calculate this using different functions inside Microsoft Excel? Of course you can. But again, this is summarizing it for you quickly. And then you can keep moving around the different variables that you're using to get additional insights. So we're going to take out credits from the values section and we're going to bring now a sale. So how much money did each person make or spend? And you can see here 169, 188, etc. So this is how you can get information. Now, what we're going to do next is, is that we're going to take another categorical variable and we're going to put it in our this section called columns. And so we're going to take semester here put it across the top and let me just scoot this over a little bit. And so now what the pivot table is showing you is showing you a breakdown of how much money each student spent each semester as an example here. So Dan spent $79, if you will, in fall semester, $90 in spring for a total of 169. And so this is, you know, how you can manipulate what you're doing inside these tables. Now, Next one. So we can do this again, but instead of having uh, sales, we could put credits in there instead. So I'm going to remove semester, or excuse me, uh, sales, and put credits down in the value section. And now we can see 
how many credits you know he took each semester again this is play data you know you probably would not take 32 credits but you get the idea now something else that you can do here and we've done this before in other videos is filter and filters were like you only see information based on a certain criteria so what I'm going to do now is is that I'm going to move semesters from column to filter and so now you can see there's a little drop down box here and I can see all the credits that these guys have taken for both semesters or I can only see information for fall or spring so if I limit the filter to spring I only see the credits that the students took for the spring semester so you can see we're getting similar results each time it all depends on how you want to present what you want to know and of course something that's even more important is do you know what you want to know <laughs> that's really the challenge a lot of times with people uh, I don't think moving and clicking on these different boxes is that complicated but do you know what you want to know and once you know that it's easy to find the proper combination inside the pivot table now a couple more examples before we conclude here we're going to move semester to the rows now and so now we're getting pretty much the same information as when it was in the column section except now instead of the, of the data being presented you know horizontally it's kind of being presented more in a vertical fashion so again we have Dan at the top here and we have his breakdown for his uh, for the fall and spring and at the very very top we have the total this should all look familiar if I move semester over here to columns you can see it's the same breakdown of, of information so we have fall here 3218 as up to 50 and move it back this way again you can see we have the total here and then fall spring 3218 etc which way is the best way it depends on what you want to know and it depends on which one is easier for you to understand and for your audience to understand there's really no right or wrong answer it really depends on the context now let's do it I think I have about two more examples here so we're gonna have students in rows again and then we're gonna have column class so I'm gonna remove semester put him up here and I'm gonna put class in the columns and so now we're getting the, the information for okay how many credits did these guys take per class and you can see the breakdown here and also when we have the grand total at the bottom right here you can see how many credits that particular class was registered for you can see that as well and so again you're getting different information depending on what where you put your uh, information at and what exactly you want to know the most important thing that even comes before dealing with Excel is determining exactly what you want to know and then using Excel and in this example the pivot tables to get the answer for those questions and last now the last one I want to do is I'm gonna remove class no I'm gonna leave class here excuse me and I'm gonna add semester down here in the row section and so now I have a breakdown of the classes, how many credits for each class the student registered for, broken down also by semester. And so it provides a more nuanced uh, insight into what you can learn from your pivot table or what you can learn from your data. So again, before we depart from this, it's very, very important that you understand how this information works. So just to give you one example, if you don't understand if I switch out rows here and put them at the top here for students and then I put this you can see I have the count of students and I have the row labels like the number of credits and this information is not too useful because you know your rows and your columns should probably always be categorical data your filters should probably always be categorical data again I'm sure there are exceptions but in my own personal experience these should always be categorical whereas your values probably should be continuous most of the time that's pretty much how it works if you don't understand that concept you're going to get funny information that'll be very hard to interpret and excel is going to figure out a way to give you an answer even if that answer does not make sense so let's summarize what we learned in this particular video in this video we learned about how to use pivot tables which provides you with an opportunity to summarize information in a table format so that you can develop insights into your data. And so you have to understand, you know, what to put in the rows, in the columns, and also the values, and sometimes even the filter section, 
all this is found in the lower right hand corner of the screen right here and you can develop your insights and so again there's lots of different combinations of ways you can put stuff into those four um, drop down four screens right there and the most important thing is that you understand exactly what it is that you want to know that is what you must determine before you even attempt to do an analysis with pivot tables so my name is Darren Thomas I am the director of educational research techniques thank you for watching and take care.